Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to seven, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. What's up, everybody? Today is Monday. I think I love Mondays. Today is Monday, January 21st, 2019. That's right. Monday, January 21st, 2019. And what's crazy, what's absolutely crazy, is today is the first and the last time it will ever be. First and last time it'll ever be. Monday, January 21st, 2019. So we want to make sure that we take advantage and make the most, the absolute most, out of this incredible, incredible day that we have in front of us. Now look, it's supposed to be a whopping, or it currently, right now, is a whopping 5 degrees here in Paris, Kentucky. It's a whopping 5 degrees, and today is a high of 24. And all I can think when I see 5 degrees, all I can think when I see a high of 24, all I can think is, man, today is going to be a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Man, it might be a little cold outside, but it's going to be a beautiful day. We had some snow this weekend, and when the snow comes in and the snow bounces off, or the sun bounces off of it, it's just absolutely incredibly beautiful so i'm excited for the sun to come up today on this beautiful beautiful day now listen i hope you had an incredible weekend i know that i had an incredible weekend it was it was just fantastic and i'm going to dive into that um, a little bit i do want to let you know though today we are going to cover three things there are going to be three things that i want you to walk away with today we're going to cover being the light we're going to cover no sheeping allowed and we're going to cover getting where you want to go but let me tell you this weekend savannah and joel had basketball games and they've won this is the first season we've ever had where both of our kids are on like really good teams. So Savannah and Joel, I think they had three or four basketball games between the two of them uh, between Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and uh, they won all their games. They're both undefeated in uh, currently in basketball. So that was fun. You know, it's kind of you know you feel bad, especially when they're beating the other teams by lots of points. So you kind of feel bad, but at the same time, it's like we're finally winning. And I love winning, and I love seeing my kids winning. So we had an incredible weekend watching them uh, play basketball. And then those of us real Christians that actually went to church yesterday... And I say that, I'm joking. My man, John Weiss, the lead pastor, he said the same thing. There was a big snowstorm, and so there wasn't a whole lot of people that actually got up and went to church yesterday. But those of us that went to church yesterday, we got an incredible, incredible service. It was it was awesome. Uh, and we also spent a lot of time here at the house. My wife got a lot done. She's watching some new show on Netflix that teaches you like how to organize all your stuff in your house. And so she went through the entire... Um, her closet and through the house she's just been organizing stuff it's pretty pretty great but there was one moment there was a moment where i literally had to get down on my knees this weekend and have a talk eye to eye with my daughter that i want to share uh with you guys i think we need to talk about it but first before we do let's dance ladies and gentlemen oh, wait a minute what's this what's this song wake up, i don't know wake up. I don't know, it's a pretty good song though. Stay I like that beat. I like how it comes in like that. Hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can dig that. I can dig that. This is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. That's right. I need you to hit that share button. Because I believe if we could change the way people start their day, we can make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. And sometimes all it takes to change somebody's day is for you to hit that share button. Go ahead and do that. This is also the part of the show where I need you to say good morning to me, and I'm going to say good morning to you. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, I want to hear from you. Good morning, Pablo Jimenez. What's up, Ray Hatcher? What's up, Charlie McHale and Sandra Benstock? How are you, Trendy Trenda? What's up, Vicki Everett? How are you doing this morning? What's up, Marcus Stone? Kurt Cahill? My man, Keith McKenzie is up in here this morning. Loving that. What's up, AJ Anderson? What's up, Richard Pink? Uh, sorry, Richard Patrick. What's up, Joshua Wilson and my man Josh? Oh, 
What's up? Who else is in here? Janelle Griego, Lindsay I, my man Scott Simon, Yo B Crack. Everybody's up in here. I love it. We got a lot to cover this morning, so we have to dance long. This is that. So I'm mastering my mental. I'm focused on my physical. I'm developing spiritually and manifesting miracles. I'm gonna get it started, have a party in the morning, and I'm gonna wake the world. It's so alarm, and I have that rising grind. First thing on my mind early in the morning. All right, that's a little sneak peek. That's something that we got in the works. That's gonna be coming out soon. What's up, Melissa Jones? She's up in here this morning, and Carissa Jones. I got Melissa Jones and Carissa Jones, and my good friend Bambi, who was spectacular on this show Friday. If you didn't watch Friday's episode, you need to go back. I went back myself and watched it a couple times, and there's so much gold in that show. Oh my gosh, so much gold in that show. Absolutely incredible. Matt Yeager, what's up? Good morning. How are you, George Fleming? All right, check it out. I don't know about you guys, but I'm totally digging my planner, man. <laughs> Just on a side note, I'm totally digging my planner. I don't know about you. I looked at it this morning. It's like, prepare for tomorrow today. Right? Like, such a simple quote. My man Nolan, Nolan Sanchez contributed it. Prepare for tomorrow today. That's kind of how I hear it when I read it. And I'm like, yeah, man, I need to do that. I need to prepare for tomorrow today. But I'm loving my planner, man. I'm totally digging it. I've been working the heck out of it. I hope that you are using yours. If you have a planner and it is on the shelf, I need you to dust that sucker off and start getting on it right now. If you haven't quite got your daily routine yet down, that's okay. I get it. I understand. But we need to continue to work on that. You made an investment in yourself, and you need to you need to open that sucker up. You got to crack it open, man. I'm telling you, it's a game changer when you use it every single day it is a game changer for those of you that haven't got your planner yet go to glennlundy.com click at the very 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 top of my page you need to get it but it's awesome it's awesome now do me a favor today actually if you're using your planner you're doing a good job with it snap a picture snap a picture of either you using your planner or snap a picture of the planner itself maybe some of your gratitude list goals share that stuff out onto your page and other people can see it and go dude what are you doing and you can be like this is what i'm doing and this is why i do it and and you could tell them about hashtag rise and grind you could tell them about the group you could tell them how to change their life i don't know but snap a picture and post it today i'd love to see those also wanted to update you guys on the mcleans the mcleans are still just doing what they do man being a light just out there uh, uh, posting all their positivity and fighting through everything we've raised all together they have raised close to about fifteen thousand dollars you got a little over thirteen thousand dollars in the gofundme plus uh we've sold like 80 shirts or so so all together you guys uh we we they have raised uh, about fifteen thousand dollars to help them out which is just absolutely incredible super super cool if you haven't done so yet make sure you go to glennlundy.com get yourself a shirt to support them or you can donate to their go fund me there's a link to that as well on my page uh, and most importantly will you guys just continue to pray for the mcleans just pray for them i mean yesterday in our planner that i was just talking about a minute ago on the weekly part of the planner it says right here at the top be a light matthew 5 14 and i thought man that that, that that's that's what the McLeans are doing right they're in the middle of this storm yet they continue to be a light they continue to push out positivity uh for the rest of us they continue to, to lift us up encourage us and and make us smile and you know that that is what we are called to do that is what we are called to do we are called to be a light and what that means, to, some people might say, well, what does that mean? What does that mean to be a light? Let me explain something to you. What that means is that in a dark world, it's up to you to shine. When those around you are dark and gray, it's your role to light them up. It's your responsibility. You see, in, in order to be a light, like being the light does not require outside light. Do you understand that? I want to make sure you hear that one more time. Being a light, if you are the light, then you don't require outside light. That means that things don't have to be perfect in order for you to still shine. That means that you're not you're not you're you're not waiting on someone external to light you up. 
That means that you're the one that's standing out and you're the one that's helping others. See, you are called to be a light. And that's exactly what Derek and Jill do. See, even in the storms, they continue to be a light. This group is designed to be a light. That's what it's designed to be. It's designed to be a place that lights up the world. It's, to be, it's designed to be a place that others can come to when they're dark or gray. And we're going to shine. We're going to shine. Now, see, I'm, I, I, I know some of you are thinking, well, well why, are, why are we talking so much about, about, about being the light? And see, I want to make sure that you don't miss this. I want to make sure that you don't miss this. Being a light is a verb. It takes action. It requires that you do. You have to be the source. See, so many of us can light up when others pour into us. So many of us can light up if the environment's right. So many of us can light up when everything is, is perfect and rosy and cheeky and things are good. But see, in order to truly be the light, in order to be the light, these external, there's nothing external. You, you don't need or require anything external in order to shine. You are the external. You are the source. You are the light. And when you live a life where you can be the light, where you don't require or need anyone or anything external, in order to shine, where your shine comes from the inside, it comes from your heart, it comes from your soul, it comes from your passion, it comes from your beliefs, it comes from your knowing, it comes from understanding your worth, it comes from understanding who you are and whose you are. And when you reach this point where you can shine, where you become the light, let me tell you, everything changes. Everything changes. The world around you will completely mold. The universe will mold around you. You'll find success in your relationships. You'll find success in your careers. You'll find success as you walk every single day. People will find you more attractive. You will impact more lives if you just continue to focus on being a light. Now, see, in order for you to be a light, that requires that you can't be a sheep. Sheep are not lights. <laughs> sheep are not lights. In order for you to be a light, it requires that you not be a sheep. You see, yesterday, my daughter Savannah, I told you guys I was going to tell you this quick story. My daughter Savannah decided at the last second she wanted to go to church with us. At first, she wasn't planning on going. It was just going to be me and my son. And my daughter decided that she wanted to go to church with us. So I go to grab Joel out from around the corner pops savannah rain lundy and she's wearing a silver dress with no sleeves it's a silver dress with no sleeves she's wearing silver glittery open-toed heels now keep in mind it snowed a few inches on saturday night so there's snow all over the ground it's like 12 degrees and here she is in a sleeveless silver dress with silver shoes that are all sparkly and she looks like, it's actually the dress she wore in New York with Mr. Benstock when we went out to dinner with Mr. Benstock. And so I'm like, hey, honey, it's like snowing outside and it's cold. Are you sure you want to wear that? And she's like, yeah, this is what I want to wear. It's nice. I'm dressed up for church. I'll throw a jacket on. I'm good. I'm like, okay, yes, yes, ma'am. You're the, you're the boss, right? So we get in the, we, or we go to leave and her mom's like, Savannah, you're going to wear that? It's cold out there. There's snow. Your feet are going to get wet. Savannah's like, yeah, this is what I want to wear. This is this. is, I'm dressed up. I look nice for church. I feel good about it. I'm going to throw a jacket over it. I'll stay warm. This is, how I'm, this is what I'm going to wear. My, my wife's like, all right, cool. So then she gets in the car. We drive to church. We get to church, and as we're walking through the church, we go to a big church, right? And as we're walking through the church, people are looking at her, man. I can see, them, I can see people looking at her, and I can see her starting to shrink a little bit. She's starting to cover herself more up for her jacket. Her toes are a little bit wet now because she was walking through the snow. And everybody's just, you know, I, I shouldn't say everybody's looking at her. But you could definitely feel that people were like, why is this girl wearing open-toed high heels when there's, you know, three inches or four inches of snow outside? Like, they weren't looking in a judgmental, mean way. People were just kind of surprised to see somebody dressed for, you know, the ball Cinderella dressed for the ball at church that morning. Everybody else was in snow boots and snow gear and so on and so forth. But you could see her starting to shrink up. 
And then when she went into her classroom, I, I just noticed that she was a little bit shy and she was kind of starting to get embarrassed about what she was wearing, but I thought she'll be okay. And so then we went to the service and when we got out of the service, I, or I went and picked her up from the kids' room and when I went and picked her up, I noticed she still had her jacket on. She wasn't sitting with anybody. She was kind of by herself. And so as she came out, she came running out, and she came out, and I said, Savannah, what's wrong? And she was like, nothing. I'm like, no, what's wrong? She's like, I just was the only person in class that had heels, and I was the only person in class that had a dress, and she, you, could, you could just tell that she was really deflated. She, she had started off walking with strength and incompetence in her outfit, but then the other people's eyes and the other people's uh, looks and the other people's questions started to make her question herself to the point where now she was wanting to cover up what once she was wanting to shine. And so I thought, man, I got to take, take this moment. And I literally got down on my knees right there in the middle of the church. Because when I'm talking to my kids on a serious note, I like to talk, I like to, talk to them. I like to have a one-on-one -on -one communication directly with them. I don't want to talk down on them. I don't want them to think that I feel as though I'm above them I am greater than them. Because I'm not. And so I get down on my knees and I look her straight in the eyes. And I pulled out my phone. And I showed her this picture right here. And I said, Savannah Rain Lundy, who stands out in this picture? And she looked at the picture and she, she said, what do you mean who stands out? I said, well, if you're just a glance at this picture, what's the first thing you see? And my daughter said, well, the first thing I see is that I'm facing one way and everybody else is facing the other way. And I said, that's right. I said, that's right, Savannah Rain Lundy. Listen to me. Listen to me. You will always stand out. You always stand out when you let your light shine. Just because everyone else is doing things one way doesn't mean we have to conform. Just because everyone else does things a certain way doesn't mean you have to do them that way. Just because all the other kids are wearing boots and all the other kids are wearing snow clothes. Now don't get me wrong, it's cold outside and you probably should cover up. And don't get me wrong, you probably shouldn't have open-toed shoes in the snow. But if you really want to stand out, you can't be a sheep. And when you choose to stand out, when you choose to be a light, you have to understand that other people might look at you. They might look at you sideways. They might think that you're different. They might think, what's up with that one? But we cannot allow the thoughts and the looks and the jeers from others to determine whether or not we are going to shine, whether or not we are going to stand out, whether or not we are going to choose to be a light. I had that conversation with my daughter, and who knows if it's sunk in or not. I know she continued to wear that dress almost the rest of the day. She didn't run home and, and, and rip it off and throw on her pajamas right away. She did a little bit later. But I hope that rests and settles in with you because I want to tell you the same thing. In order for you to be the light, you're going to have to stand out. You can't be a sheep. And I know it can be hard. Like It literally takes a shift, right? It literally takes a shift. It takes a change. Like inherently you have to change to not listen and not worry and not be concerned about what everybody else thinks. To really stand out on your own. To really shine inherently. Some things have to, sh to change. But I'm telling you, those that stand out, those that are alike, those, they, you, you become more attractive. The universe molds its way around you. Listen, yesterday at church, my man John Wee said something powerful. I wrote it down. He said, I always get where I'm going by walking away from where I've been. I'm here to tell you this morning that in order for you to truly be a light, for you to stand out, it requires a directional change. You cannot continue to do the same and create something different. It won't work. You cannot continue to do the same and create something different. Today is Martin Luther King Day and there's one man who lived by this. He, 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 he truly was a light. He refused to be a sheep. He refused. He walked away from the violence. He walked away from his small town. He walked away from comfort zones. He walked away from all of that. And this single man changed the world. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper.
if I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they have committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. That was his last speech. Martin Luther King was assassinated shortly after that. But I believe that when he stood on that podium and basically predicted his own death, I believe that he meant what he said. He meant what he said when he, when he said he'd, he'd been to the mountaintop. He meant what he said when he said he'd seen the promised land. He meant what he said where he said he wasn't worried about man. He wasn't worried about earthly things. Because he knew what heaven had in store for him in the future. He continued. He continued to be a light. He continued to stand up for what he believed in. He was willing to die for it. He was willing to die for it. And because he was willing to die for it, he completely changed the landscape of the world. He completely changed the landscape of the world. You can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. Not get assassinated, but you know what I'm saying? You can change the world. I just want you to go out there. Stand up for what you believe in. Be an individual. Don't conform. Don't be a sheep. Walk away from where you were. Change direction. Walk away from where you were. So that you can get to where you're going. And go out there today. And be a light. Because see you have to understand that you are a child of God. Uniquely made by the God of the universe to be the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. You're already starting to make good decisions. You're watching hashtag rise and grind. You're up in the group. You're posting positive stuff. You're doing all of these incredible things. You're smiling more. You're shaking hands. You're sending out encouraging messages. You're doing all of these credible things. And I'm telling you, they're making an impact. It's making an impact on your friends, making an impact on your family members, making an impact on your coworkers, and it's made a massive impact on me. And I, for one, I absolutely love you for it. If nobody's told you that yet today, I want to be the first. I absolutely stinking love you. I truly do. So go out there and have a phenomenal day today. Be a light. Be a light. Have an incredible day. 
And if you need more videos, you can go to glennlundy.com. If you need some Rise and Grind gear, go to glennlundy.com. If you haven't got your planner yet, go to glennlundy.com. And then most importantly, will you do me a favor? Will you come back here again tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m.? Because we're going to do it all over again on hashtag Rise and Grind. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Stay well, stay well, stay well. Dirty one and grind. Hashtag rising grind. Hashtag rising grind. First thing on my mind, early in the morning time. Daily motivation, feeling so divine. Waking up the nation. Hashtag rising grind. Hashtag rising grind. Grind, grind. Hashtag rising grind. Sunrise, stepped into my greatness, feeling powerful and energized. Thankful to be alive. Hashtag blessed, write my mission, vision, values, and my gratitude list. I'm building up momentum, I'm making good decisions. I rise, I grind, I get it. Ain't no doubt that I'm committed. Cause who really loses if I don't win? Can't cheat the grind, only get what you put in. So I'm mastering my mentals. I'm focused on my physical, I'm developing spiritually and manifesting.